Hello, everybody, and thank you, DTM Corval, for that introduction. Today, in our Tech Guru workshop, we're going to be talking about time zones. My name's Ian Murray, and I live in District 73 over in Australia, um, part of the world that's the bottom end of the, of the planet, and we don't all stand upside down. Um, you will learn a bit more about me as we go through a presentation around time zones. Let me just share my screen using a new beta feature of Zoom. And now you should see my PowerPoint, talk about time. Looks like it's working. First of all, why would you listen to me in talking about time zones? Firstly, I've been working with multinational organizations for a very long time. Way back in 1988, I was working for a company called IBM. You may have heard of it. With IBM, I had the need to talk with multiple people across the world, learning how things worked. It was a great opportunity, but it taught me very early on that I needed to be able to understand how to connect with people in other time zones. After all, the world is round, and with the clock having 24 hours, they are distributed around that globe pretty evenly, but not perfectly evenly. Knowing that, I had to be an early adopter in learning how to use technology smartly, how to use all the tools that, are, that were available at the time and now, and bringing people together to produce outcomes. One of the outcomes I've been involved with, and one where I've met some of you here, like Fabiola, has been around the use of online Toastmasters clubs, using technologies such as this to bring people together to have meetings. It's really important to be able to organise a meeting time with people around the world. So with that experience, I've learned quite a bit about how time zones work and how we can help them work for us when organising Toastmasters events. Now, Australia is a fairly large continent, and it's so large that it's actually almost as big as many of the countries around the world. Maybe different shapes there at times, but what's really interesting about Australia is that it spans many time zones. If you look at that picture right now, you will see that we cover from, from a political standpoint time zones from UTC plus five to UTC plus 11. That's six complete hours of time covered by parts of Australia. And there are some with half times. In fact, there are some which are at 45 minute intervals. There's a lot of time zones in Australia. And with that background, I've had to learn a lot about how time zones work and how we can bring people together. Just, I mentioned before that I'm a member of District 73 in Toastmasters. And at one time, District 73 uh, included Western Australia, which is at UTC plus eight, South Australia, which is at UTC plus 9.30, and Victoria, UTC plus 10, and that little island down the bottom, Tasmania, at UTC plus 10 as well. With, with that breadth of a district, we really had to understand time zones. But I've already used a word that some of you may not have come across, and that is word, UTC, Universal Coordinated Time. Yeah, it's not quite UTC or UCT, Universal Coordinated Time, but you get the idea. Because of the French, we had to make sure that we had an acronym that would work globally. So UTC is Universal Coordinated Time, where all time is measured from a standard that's, that's based around Greenwich Mean Time. Now, Greenwich Mean Time is one that many people have heard about, you know, GMT plus 10, but really since the 1960s, we've been moving towards UTC as a standard time zone for the world. It's used a lot around maritime, weather, um, news, all those domains talk about time referring to UTC. But not everyone understands that. And I remember a time around about five to 10 years ago now, where I was at an event and someone said, when's that next event on? And the answer was, it's on at 8pm Eastern. Now, from an Australian perspective, which Eastern were they talking about? 
we have Eastern time in Australia. They happen to be in America. They were talking about Eastern time there. Many countries actually have an Eastern time zone. So it's really important for us to get specific about the time that an event is on. It's not just the time on the clock, but it's the time zone that it's in, the time zone that's held in. And what we need to do is to make it really easy for the person that is receiving the information to understand what's relevant to them. 8 p.m. Eastern isn't very useful on its own. What I really need to know are a couple of pieces of information. What I need to have is a common language for talking about time. We have common languages to say hello. You know, we say hello across the world. And even though some countries use hello or hola or bonjour, when we say hello, 80% of the world probably understands us by now. It's a common language. We need a common language for time too. And it needs to be common because the world is shrinking. I don't know about you. But when I hear about the news, I realise how much information I can receive about all the things happening in the world today. 50 years ago, it wasn't the same. 30 years ago, I remember travelling on my first international trip. I, I went to Hong Kong and boy, it was hard to find out news about Australia. But now that news is at our fingertips. It's available on our mobile devices. The world is shrinking we can reach far more places far more easily than we ever have before. I mentioned we needed a common language. You're hearing my words. They do help convey information. But we also need body language and vocal variety to help convey emotion. But we also need one other common element, and that is perspective. When we're speaking, when we're presenting in our Toastmasters clubs, when we're presenting at work and describing a situation, Part of the job of the presenter is to provide a perspective that each participant can use to understand that message. The same is true with time. We need to provide some perspective. Here are some, some famous CEOs around the world, and you'll see some of their quotes about collaboration, about how do we connect with people, and just have a read of those and, and look at the mentions of time. It's really important when we collaborate, when we bring people together at a Toastmasters club, in our club officer uh, meetings, our executive meetings, our district meetings, time is a major factor in bringing people together. Each one of these quotes refers to a context of time, super important for our collaboration. But we need to use a global standard. As I mentioned, UTC is the primary standard now which the world uses to regulate all clocks and time around the world. And if you go to your legal frameworks in all of our countries around the world, they will specify what time scales they use at that location. Increasingly, they are referring to a time offset from UTC. If you look at this backdrop, you'll see the world is broken up into time zones. And each one of these vertical bars is an offset from UTC. Some of them will be plus, there's Australia, that will be plus 10 or plus 11 if we have daylight saving. It is really important for us to get familiar around the world with what our offset is from UTC. When we have daylight saving, it almost always moves by one hour. And no one person in the world knows them all. Like there aren't just 24 time zones. There's actually more like 50. There are more time zones than hours in the day. It's actually quite complicated. But really, once we know about UTC and where we live in the world in context to UTC, we will find that the methods to convert time become a simple maths problem. Simple? Maths? Yeah, pretty simple. Let's just look at this example. Let's assume an event is being held at 6 a.m. on Friday in a time zone which is at UTC minus 5. Now, UTC minus 5 happens to be 
somewhere in the world, I actually don't need to know. The beauty of this maths problem is I don't need to know where that actually is. But I do need to know where I am and where I am in Melbourne at the moment, Melbourne, Australia, we're in a daylight saving time. Right now, we are at UTC plus 11. And what I can do to convert any event is to look at the difference between these UTC times. With minus five to 11, I actually know that the event will be held 16 hours ahead of that 6 a.m. Friday time slot. So I know that I will attend at 2200 hours. Yes, 24 hour clock. That's 10 p.m. my time. It becomes a very simple calculation. Now, one of the biggest things I mentioned earlier in, our, in this presentation is the need to have perspective and to allow our audience to adopt a perspective that helps them understand. One of the things I've learned is that when announcing an event, I want to make it really easy for people to work out when something is in their time zone. It doesn't matter when it is in my time zone. I've been presenting around the world for years. But what I need to do is make it easy for them to work out what time it is in their time zone. Being a guru tech workshop, you guys will all know that technology makes it easier. That's always the thing in these workshops, isn't it? This is one of my favorite websites, timeanddate.com. It's been around for about 15 years now and has some really useful things. It shows you the current time, has some calculators, even talks a bit about the weather and the planets. But what's really useful is this section here around time zones. And you'll see if you look closely, there's one there called Time Announcer. We're going to have a quick look at that right now. Let me just bring up on my screen, if I can, share screen. This is going to be a problem. I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, let's just, uh, I won't do that just yet because I know I'm going to have a problem. I will try that later on. When I use the event Time Announcer, I can actually enter an event at a particular place. You'll see that I have actually created an event, which is for 1 a.m. in AST, way out in 2025. That means this presentation will last for a while. But having created that event in that event time announcer, when I send a link to people, they can actually see the time at their location. So I, as the event creator, can specify what time the event is going to be held at in my location, but they can see what time the event is going to be held at their location. And this just requires that their computer knows what time it is. And most of us know that our computer's times are right, unless we're travellers, in which case we know how to make it right. Otherwise, give me a call and I can help you out. Another useful thing of this time event announcer is that we can, with a very few clicks, add it to our calendar. We can add this event in our calendar in our time zone and super easy to schedule it into our lifetime, lifestyles so that we can be sure to be at that event. It's a really useful tool. I will show you that shortly as I get through some of these other slides so that I don't mess up this this recording. But there are alternative tools around. Some of you will have come across World Time Buddy. It also helps you specify a time of an event and others can see when it suits them. And there's also this other time zone converter. You can explore those in your own time. But timeanddate.com is my favorite. It's really useful for announcing when an event is and bringing people on board in their time zones. Now, I just want you to think about how that might get used. You want to be able to include that announced time in a number of places where we work today, whether with Toastmasters or in our jobs. You might want to include it into a Facebook event. It's got a description. You can include the link to this time zone converter there. 
Similarly, you can include it in your email sequences. If you're about to have an event, such as this conference, you could, you could send out an email a week before the event saying, please add this to your diary and provide them a link to the website that provides this format and allow them to add it to their calendar in a time zone that matches them wherever they are in the world. It's a really useful tool to bring the event's time to be personal to the person reading the advertisement. And of course, there are times when you don't do things online, where it's not on Facebook, it's not in an email, it may be in a flyer. The gotcha is on a flyer, that the flyer would need for everybody to understand where AST is or where Eastern is. It's a challenge. But what's really useful on this website, timeanddate.com, if you scroll down, it includes the UTC time. So on a flyer, the physical document, which shows when an event might be, you can include the UTC time so that anybody reading it, wherever they are, can work out where or when that event is going to be on using that simple maths. If this is... UTC is, if it's at 5 a.m. in UTC and I'm at UTC plus 11, I know it's going to be at 1600 hours or 4 p.m. in my time or 4 a.m. because, of, yeah, 4 p.m. at my time. So it's really, really clear when we put on a flyer that you, it's in UTC at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. UTC. And it remains that simple maths problem. We know the event is to be held at a known offset to UTC. I need to know my offset from UTC. I can determine the difference between the two and then I can calculate the result. It's a quite a simple thing for most people to deal to cope with. There are other opportunities for us to use time zones and be able to bring people together. One thing that I've learned is that district events, club events, club officer events, we often need to work out when are people free? And there are a few tools around that I'm just going to mention here as well as a bit of a bonus. A number of you will have heard of Doodle. It's a, a tool, a website, which you can go to and suggest four or five times that might suit you. And then your executive committee of your club can then say, yes, that suits me or no, that doesn't. It's quite a simple tool to, to gather consensus over when an event should be. But my favorite is a tool called Arranger. It's spelt strangely, Arranger, but it's quite new and can allow you to coordinate an event with up to 15 people. And what I really like about it is that you're able to specify a set of times and then your co-participants can say how well that time suits them. And once you have their responses with practically one or two clicks you can then accept the best time that suits and continue to schedule the meeting arranger is free for up to 15 people and it's a really really useful tool to be able to get a group of people to meet at one time that's a bit of a bonus but as you can see there's a, there's many tools that will help with our time zone problems i'm creating a bit of a list on wikipedia at meeting scheduling software. Worth having a look soon to see all the tools you can use to schedule time amongst your teams. So hopefully in the last few minutes, I've given you some insights into how time zones can be complicated, but can really be made simple to help people get to an event that you wish them to attend. With timeanddate.com, they can see the time in their local time zone. If you can use a UTC time, i.e. the time of your event in UTC, anyone in the world can work out when that is for them. After all, it's all about perspective, giving them the perspective to be able to see how it affects them in their lives. So I hope I've, I've introduced you to some of the, the opportunities you have to bring your teams together in times that suit them.
And it's really important. If you can use tools like timeanddate.com, you are able to inform people in ways that is meaningful to them. And after all, in Toastmasters, isn't that what we do want to do with all our messaging? Let's do it for times too. Thank you, DTM Corp.